Hey y'all, it's Raj with EV365 and today we wanted to take a look at the NAX to CCS adapter by Test Studio. Um, and it's a real sturdy feeling adapter, much sturdier than the one that Rivian worked with Tesla to give us. Just the plastic material on the one they sent feels pretty cheap and almost feels like if you drop this thing a few times, <laughs> it may come apart on you. This one from Test Studio is really solid. Um, even the clip on top, um, is very sturdy. feels like it's, uh, it's going to last a little bit. And now the one thing with these third party adapters is most of the automakers, I think Ford, GM, Rivian, um, all the companies that are allowing access to the, uh, Tesla supercharger network, they're saying if you use these third party adapters, you may be at risk of voiding out any kind of warranty or anything if something goes wrong. So just keep that in mind. What I suggest using these third-party adapters for are if you're waiting on your official adapter uh, from your auto manufacturer um, and you do need to make some road trips, this is a good stopgap until those get there. And then, of course, once you've got it, it's always good to have a backup. Obviously, you're depending on this adapter to be able to use those uh, superchargers on road trips. Um, so if anything goes wrong with that adapter, for whatever reason, you've got a backup. So this one, basically that, uh, that Nax, uh, charging unit just plugs right into it. And then this goes into your CCS port. Another important thing to point out, a lot of people still get this confused. This is strictly for DC fast charging at these supercharger units. This is not for use on the Tesla destination chargers that you'd find at a hotel or um, the Tesla chargers that you have at home. You need a different type of adapter for that that doesn't include these two pins down here. Um, and of course, that's for just a lot less current. Um, so yeah, let's go give this thing a try and see how it works. I've already got our Rivian set up in the Rivian app, so I can just plug and play. Every auto manufacturer is gonna handle it differently. Um, if your manufacturer doesn't allow plug and play through their app, um, you have to then sign up through the Tesla app and you can activate the charge through there. So let's give this thing a try. Oh, and wanted to mention, not sure if you can see that on the bottom, but this thing has a weatherproof rating of IP65. So it can handle, um, you know, a little bit of rain and moisture and, you know, some dust protection. And it uh, rated current is 500 amps and can be used in negative 22 Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is uh, built in China and it does have the FCC rating, um, but it's not UL uh, certified. All right, so there it is. You can see we've got that thing plugged in and it was literally, this just slides in, uh, pops into the charger and it basically accepted the charge really quick. We got charging super fast, no issues. We're gonna come in here and just kind of take a look at the screen and you can see it's charging. Uh, we're pulling 406 miles per hour. We'll come over here to the charging screen and we can kind of see what kilowatts we're pulling. Let's switch that over there. Yeah, 161 kilowatts an hour, which is typically what I get on these Tesla superchargers. So it seems to be working great. Um, and I wanted to go out. Now it doesn't lock in, so I wanted to see yeah, you see that? So that's something that I don't recommend you do. And it is a safety issue kind of with these third party units is you can just pull it out when it's being used. There's no locking mechanism on the unit itself. Um, so again, you gotta be very careful when using some of these units. So if you are using this, I would say stick around, keep an eye on it. All right, y'all, I've got it plugged back in over here. And you can see, again, it's charging. It has no problem picking up the charge. It's super quick. Um, honestly, I feel like it's quicker than another third-party adapter I've been using. Um, so yeah, just that little locking mechanism is the big issue I have with it. Um, and of course, it's not UL certified. Um, so again, all these third-party units, use them kind of as a backup, as a stopgap until your uh, auto manufacturer's charger gets into place or one that they authorize. Um, but yeah, this is a great little cheap option to use kind of in the meantime. Again, it's by Test Studio, and they're going to have a bunch of sales here during Black Friday. Uh, check my comments below, and I'll be sure to add any links, and be sure to ask me any questions. Hang loose, y'all.